taking on Ryan McAllister, the CJHL Player of the Year. He lit up the AJHL Brooks, trying to go back to back at the Centennial Cup. Good wheels. TJ Hughes stole the puck, starts the play. McAllister in front. That shot stopped. Rebound available. Good pass in front as Devin Phillips was teed up. McAllister wrist shot in and out of the glove. And again, it's that top line for Brooks. What a feed, and Devin Phillips couldn't cash right in front. Good job by Turner. Slings it across as Brooks trying to come and waves again. Hughes drops. McAllister shoots, and that grazed a bit of the crossbar. Cipolo takes contact, gets the puck, back up top. Bookman, Cipolo collects, thought about shooting, goes back to the line. Bookman, down low, and that shot by Buckberger just missing. That drive through traffic in front, Armstrong, nice screen in front on the drive from Bookman. You can see how Bookman gets his looks. It's, yeah, getting it on net, but trying to get that clear look as Pickering finally coming in numbers with a chance. Free shot up high and still loose in the crease, that drive, score! on his fourth of the tournament. You nailed it, Brian, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, there was no indication that there was going to be any type of pressure, but it comes off of a turnover and then a really good shot and the puck stays alive. And then Doyle gets right there on it in front of the net. Barwick really can handle the initial shot. And Doyle makes a nice play, just leaving himself enough room outside the crease to flip it up over him. But what a nice shot by Martin. And there's Doyle, the pot in the rebound. And on their first and second shots of the game, just like that, Pickering has a 1 0 lead. And Off to McAllister. McAllister towards the net. Tip loose. Trickling's out of the net. Back end feed. McAllister is shot. Knocked down in front. And a second. Stretch pass for Armstrong. He'll hit the trailer. Back pass. Armstrong in front as Hughes had him teed up. Good job. The point is, is that Pickering is not vulnerable. McAllister shoots through traffic. A rebound, Hughes. He was taken down trying to get to that rebound. Had some. Still skated up the ice. McAllister to his left. He hits him. McAllister. Bookman in. Waits in front. Backdoor pass. McAllister drives it in. And no goal. Was waiting for the signal. A lovely pass. And there's a great chance off the rush for Brooks. And they nearly cashed. Up for Phillips with Hackett. Phillips puts on the brakes. It's the trailer. Bookman winds up shot off a of body through the crease. Still loose to the left. And it goes to the far circle. McAllister, Bookman, Buckburner, and shoots off the post again. Label part of the crossbar again behind Roy. Partridge gives behind the net. Played up to the far point. That wrister stopped. Rebound in front. Side of the net. And sprawling out Barwick to keep it out. Little John. Been strong in the net. Tomlinson, far boards. Picked off. The Braves in front. Backdoor pass for Fink. Score! They got one. Aiden Fink buries his third of the tournament. And Brooks finally cashing by Zachary Roy. I'll tell you what, Aiden Fink really stayed on that puck because. He was being checked really hard by Brendan Tomlinson, and it looked like Tomlinson was going to be able to have it, but, you know, this is an opportunity where they have the puck. Tomlinson throws it around, and here it looks like they can get it out, but they're not able to get it out. Lund keeps it in, works it one side, and Fink stays right on the puck. What a great play by Lund, and then back quickly, and you can see just where Tomlinson just can't tie up Fink, but important part of that was Fink staying right on the puck, right at the net. 18-year-old Aiden Fink, third of the tournament, massive. And we'll see if that gives Brooks some life as Phillips is in. Phillips in, forehand, score! Devin Phillips! Dennis Bayak, they just went bang, bang. Brooks getting it done, it's 2-1. I mean, the puck was intercepted, and, and now it comes across the blue line. It's going to be interesting to see if this ends up being a review. Phillips is down on the ice. Phillips, obviously a massive goal, and then you'll see the end of the play as he was in all alone, buries it, and then you'll see. Yeah, well, 
Bookman makes a real good pass. Cavlin trying to get back on him, and unfortunate for Phillips, obviously. But what a pass there, and Phillips knocks it down and makes a great backhand to forehand move on Zachary Roy. That, you said bang, bang. Here's the play in just a real good move there. And but the beautiful thing is that promise is still there. Another shot off the post has fake as he's starting to feel it. Having a game for Brooks. Rob Pearson told us this team will never quit. They'll never say die and never give up as a break shot. Kick save again. A huge save there. Heath Armstrong was in. What a save. Here's Hughes, drops it off, wrist shot stopped. McAllister with a great look. A guy I would never want to play against is exactly what he sounds like. Turnover, Hughes on the block with McAllister. McAllister shoots, scores! Surprise, surprise, you couldn't keep him down for long. Ryan McAllister, seventh of the tournament, Brooks by two. Well, what Brooks has been able to do is take advantage of some turnovers here in this third period and then attack. And that's exactly what happens here again. You know, Pickering has the puck on their stick and there's an opportunity to start moving the other way and they just aren't able to do it. Now the puck gets turned over right into the middle. And that's a great play by Hughes coming back through the middle and then McAllister just gets totally ready and he doesn't make any mistake right up off the pad. Zachary Roy nearly gets there, but the fact is, is that McAllister gets it off a stick so fast that advantage Ryan McAllister. You know, you're going to send it for Lindsay and his skates. Slip down the ice and a two on one for Brooks as they'll bust in. What a move to the backhand. Second try, Belgeau. And finally, the first penalty of the game on row interference. Man, when he wound it up, Dario Belgeau coming in. He's remaining and now on the penalty kill. And it's back to Bookman, and we know this. Brooks on cue, McAllister scores, power play goal. They are lethal, and they show it again as McAllister is second of the game, and that should ice it. It's a three-goal cushion. Well, I'll tell you what, he said, we're playing well, no need to panic. And <laughs> tell you what, once they got that first goal, it seemed like it just allowed them to breathe and put some wind in their sails, but Power play goal, quickly off the faceoff, and Ryan McAllister, if you want to know what victory feels like and a championship feels like, well, here's the goal, just a real quick, and remember, he's worked the goalie a bunch of different ways, and what a shot. And then as you watch him celebrate with a smile, it tells you everything you need to know. Yes, thank you. We got this one, Brooks. So on the first penalty call, what got weird pass? the near boards and that would have been insult to injury by Zachary Roy who recovered play it Ethan Barwick he'll slash it for Bookman just over his skate just a wonderful tournament in Estevan obviously 10 teams because of COVID and a huge success as time will wind down here in Estevan and after waiting for two long years without this championship the Brooks Bandits go back to back at the Centennial Cup. These hidden ones, these players, they've battled all year long, but all of a sudden, Everything feels a little bit better when you have this thing to lift over your head as the captain, Ethan Lund. A champion here in Estevan with his Brooks Bandits.